so good morning everybody and thanks for watching this video i hope to give you a better understanding of the software that accompanies the 24-hour blood pressure monitor i'll talk you through how you can analyze reports search for previous reports and input patient data or customer data um, and basically everything you'd need to know in order to perform upload and analyze a 24-hour blood pressure read so this is the home screen once any of you open your software at home or in your pharmacy or in the community or in the gp surgery this is the screen that will greet you um, and anything here below this here obviously we only have one report here now at the minute because on my screen I haven't taken any blood pressure readings or uploaded any onto this. So it's just a demo report here available to me. But as time goes on and you'll have used your 24 hour blood pressure monitor more and more, this will start to populate and grow. At the minute, we're searching from January 1900 to today um, and 2021. But if you wanted to filter reports down um, in terms of date or patient ID or name, this is where you can do that to search any historic reports that you will have taken. Um, and that's pretty much all this first tab here called test is used for. It's a database where all the information that you will have uploaded is available to view. The next tab over here is a very important tab to you all and you'll all become very familiar with this. It's the program button. Um, so once what I'd suggest to people to do now is to plug your 24 hour blood pressure monitor, connect it via the USB key um, and then hit the program button. I'm just going to highlight this text box here for the purposes of this video. So I hope you can all see that clearly at the minute. And this is where we enter our patients or customers data. You can enter as much or as little as you see fit. And the only piece of information that we have to enter something into is the name bar here, just here. If you didn't want to enter a customer's name for whatever reason, um, just enter a unique identifier so that you'll be able to identify this is, these results are belonging to this patient or this customer um, and just so you wouldn't be getting any results mixed up. Um, patient ID, when I hit the program button, it gave me this patient ID. If you don't have your own, it'll create its own generic one um, and that will never be repeated twice on this program. The date of birth is entered in here, ID, number, address, hypertension, height, weight, guardian, age, gender, phone number, device used, so on and so forth. So this, this first, if we look at this in three sections, so the first section from patient ID down to hypertension, this is where you identify your customer um, and you have various means to do that. It's up to you how much or how little of this data we want to use. But for now, I'll just enter Joe Blogs. And I'm happy enough that I have only one Joe Blogs that is a customer of mine. So, and he has a unique identifier number there generated by our software program. I'm not going to bother with birth date or ID or address or hypertension or any of the other demographic information here for now. I'm going to jump down here to the second bit of information that it's looking from me. So this starts from source down to time of first medication. Source is automatically generated as an outpatient, not very vital information, whether they're an inpatient or an outpatient or an exam. Generally speaking, if you're looking for a 24 hour reading, they're, go they're always going to be an outpatient. So it's set to default as an outpatient there. Um, then when we move across this line, same thing again, if you don't think the information is necessarily vital to you or your customer, don't bother entering it. Um, outpatient, inpatient or bed. Your clinic, um, this is where you can enter your pharmacy name if you wish, um, a diagnosis, 
whatever information you see fit here, you can enter it. So for now, I'm going to leave this blank for Joe Blogs because all I'm concerned with is that Joe Blogs will be recorded as an outpatient. And down to the bottom third of this page, which starts with recorder model and max systolic pressures here in fixed intervals. So if I start from the top here, which is recorder model, this has all been populated for us. So it's tele ABP is just the device name. Um, and then max pressure and keyboard enabled and display enabled. But the important thing lies here. So awake time and sleep time. What I'd always suggest you do is ask your customer, generally speaking, what time do you wake in the mornings? This can vary greatly for people. Um, so in this case, I have Joe Blogs who's come into my pharmacy and Joe Blogs I just simply ask him, Joe, what time do you, would you regularly get up in the morning? And he'd say around eight o'clock every morning. So there's no point in me having his awake time as 6.30. So I'm going to adjust this down to eight o'clock in the morning. So we've selected eight o'clock that Joe Bloggs has confirmed that he wakes up roughly around that time every morning. The exact same thing applies with sleep time. We'd ask our customer, what time would you roughly go to bed at? And Joe Bloggs has told me that he goes to bed around 11 o'clock every night. So I've changed the awake time to eight o'clock and his sleep time to 11 o'clock. And if we follow this across, so follow the awake time, if we were to draw an imaginary line right across the screen from awake time to intervals in minutes, the intervals in minutes refers to our awake time here. So we want a blood pressure reading every 30 minutes when Joe Bloggs is awake. And then if we were to follow it across from sleep time, the interval in minutes is set to 45 minutes for sleep time. Now, I think generally speaking, people normally set them from a daytime reading of 30 minute blood pressures and night times as 60. So I've changed the interval for the sleep cycle there to 60 minutes. Um, and that's it. So a special period then is this will usually uh, be set to none and I'll just set it to none for now. A special period is a period of time that you ask your customer if you want or if, if you think it's an important function of this software. Um, Joe, is there anything that you're doing in the next 24 hours that might prevent you from leaving the device on? Or might is there anything that you have planned in the next 24 hours that might prevent you from wanting to get this blood pressure checked over a 24 hour period? And if Joe Bloggs had football training at seven o'clock uh, for one hour, we can go down here or if him or her wanted to go to mass every day at seven o'clock or three o'clock, whatever time, we can go down to the special period, select a time that starts at seven and ends at, we just run in hypothetical situations here, but starts at seven, ends at eight and an interval of 60 minutes. So what I've done there is I've effectively turned the device off for an hour. So our customer can go about their daily living without having to turn the device on. If they're going anywhere that's particularly quiet, um, probably most often would be used in um, church or mass or anywhere that that would be causing embarrassment to our, our customers or patients if they, if they heard the pump in the device activating in a quiet environment. So that's where you can enable or disable this function. Um, 99% of the time, if somebody has a 24 hour blood pressure monitor on, they'll probably skip whatever needs to be done for that day. But if it was something that they couldn't skip, that's what the special period means there. So we've reviewed all of this information now. 
Um, and it's taken me a few minutes there to do it, but it, it's it's really straightforward. I was just slowing right down for demonstration purposes. Um, so what we've done is we've hit the program button. This text box has appeared here, um, and it's broken down into three subsections. The first one is our patient ID. It automatically generates a patient unique identifier number. We enter a name or a unique identifier here for our customer or patient. A gender is important. And then we pop down to this menu function here in the middle from source to time of first medication. There was nothing that I see as important information there for me to enter at the minute. So I skip right down to awake and sleep cycles. We ask our customers, what time do you get up in the morning? Um, and we select this drop down menu and select the appropriate time there. And we're going to set the intervals for awake as 30 minutes. And the same question applies for sleep. What time do your customers go to bed at? Um, and we select the drop down menu here, select the appropriate time and set the sleep interval to 60 minutes. Once we're happy with all of this information, just have a quick glance over it, make sure you're happy with it and hit the OK button. It's now going to program this information into your device that is connected by a USB port. And that's it. That's how you set up a 24 hour blood pressure reading with the Medicare 24 hour blood pressure monitor. Our customer has now returned to the pharmacy 24 hours after their first blood pressure reading with the device in hand, and we're looking to download the results. So how do we do that? That's achieved by clicking the retrieve button. You connect your device by, via the USB port and select the appropriate device, and it will automatically upload the data. The data then will appear in the home screen and you have your first report. In order to view your patient's report, you double click on the highlighted report. So we now have a new range of options available to us down the left hand column here. Um, test information is the first tab that's opened and everything to the right of my screen here equates to test information. So you will have remembered these numbers and, um, and options here from our setup of our initial device. So if at the time we were very busy and we couldn't enter a patient height or a patient or customer's weight or customer's height, then we can retrospectively add them here. Once you're happy with what you've added, make sure you hit the save button. Statistics then is the next tab available to us. Once we click on statistics, we have a lovely extended range of options here for us to view. So you can just scan down through it um, and we'll note here that anything above 130 in our systolic will highlight in red and anything below 40 in our diastolic will highlight as red. And you get a good overall view of the 24 hour readings. At the top of the statistics tab, um, we can filter everything or the information that we want to see here. So if we want to have a look at our maximum pressures as anything above 120, we can add it here and our minimum systolic pressures of anything below 60, we can add it there. So if I refresh that data, we'll now see an awful lot more red boxes. And so on. The next tab available to us are trends. Um, same thing, uh, we still have our waterfall version here, full disclosure of all our reports. Um, and this is just a nice visual indicator. Um, if you hold your mouse over any reading here, it'll give you, it'll highlight a text box to, to give us 
an exact number on our systolic, diastolic and heart rate there. The next tab available to us is a scatter plot. And beneath that, we'll find a pie chart. Pie charts can be really useful ways to demonstrate to your patients um, and show your patients where the majority of their blood pressure lies throughout a 24 hour period. Histogram is another option for viewing. And hourly is the gold standard for us to have a look at. Um, so we've systolic pressures, diastolic, heart rate, and MAP. Our final tab here is the report tab. And on this report, it automatically pulls the data available to us from all of the above tabs and puts them into a report. Notice over here that it's given us a, an overall snapshot of what happened over the previous 24 hour period. So our systolic maximum pressure was 175 versus our systolic minimum pressure of 83. It also time stamps both of these pressures and the same with our diastolic pressures. It'll give us a maximum and a minimum reading on them. Below that, it'll show us our heart rate our maximum heart rate was 93 beats per minute at two o'clock and our minimum heart rate was 44 beats per minute at 4.30. In terms of percentages, our systolic was above averages 33.3% of the 24 hour period. If you wanted to free text in here, you can just click on it. You can add as much or as little information as you see appropriate there. Once you're happy, hit save. And just beneath here, all of these text boxes can be ticked or unticked. And whatever you think is appropriate, you can save it uh, to print it or send it. And that's pretty much it uh, using the Medicare 24-hour blood pressure monitor.